Okay, so this legacy deck I'm looking at runs Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes, from uh, Baldur's Gate, which has an absolutely hilarious minus two with Dark Depth. Sacrifice, Merit Lodge, and just dome them for 20. Seems good. Welcome back to the Unreal Salt Mark, where, you know, James Frank and I discuss why Magic the Gathering is a socially acceptable form of substance abuse, and if you want to actually have fun in your life, you should stick. Today we're trying to figure out lands. You know them, you love them, unless you reap source spells, your deck plays them. But it turns out, like, if you're playing Legacy, you can actually make this really sick control deck with lands. For lands. Dot deck. And so, you know, I thought, why, why am I discussing, you know, lands. Dot deck? And, well, frankly, the answer is it was the first thing that came to mind for a topic. But legitimately, my question is, could we do this in modern? Because I'm not sure if anyone knows this, or hell, anyone actually plays Eternal Formats who isn't me. But Renin 6 is banned in Legacy. You know, the two mana Planeswalker. But it's not banned in Modern. And I thought, hell, if it's not banned in Modern, you could probably make a pretty sweet lands deck with that. You know, recur both Sages, do some interesting things with Urza Saga, that kind of thing. What do you say, James? Uh, I say it. Surely there's a good reason. But I don't know what that good reason is, because we don't have Wasteland in Modern, but we do have Ghost Quarter, uh, and every competitive deck runs, like, two basics. So once you've Ghost Quartered twice, you are just strip mining them, and you can return that Ghost Quarter with Run in Six every turn, and then they just won't be allowed to play a spell. Especially if you have, like, you know, one Fully Acid Moss or Stone Rain or something to deal with the one basic land. Yeah. And that, that's what I thought as well, is you can chew through Ghost Quarters pretty efficiently. Loam is legal in Modern last time I checked. And a lot of the other mediocre lands, or at least playable lands, are actually Modern legal. Like, for instance, Thespian Stage is legal. Poseidon is legal. Blast Zone, legal. Grove. Grove of the Burn Willows is legal. But we're not seeing these put together in some kind of Ponza-style control deck. Are you sure Grove is still legal? I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's perfectly mediocre land unless you play Punishment Fire. Okay, yeah, let me pull that up. Yeah, look at this. Uh, you know, Grove of the Bone Weagles. Legal okay, in so every form. Punishing format. Fire is banned, Grove is not. Okay. Punishing Fire is banned in Modern. I have one Assault Loam list pulled up on NPG Top 8 because you basically can't find anyone playing anything like this. And the answer is probably th that you can't find this because it doesn't involve free spells because this is good but if you can just you know whip out a solitude or a force negation it, it gets a lot less good because then you can't actually tax your opponent's mana because they're not using mana okay so this list i have that we can start uh with talking from uh does run ren and six it does not run ghost court it doesn't seem to be running anything that is as good as Ghost Quarter. Okay, so what else? Even running fetch lands. Yeah, my idea for this actually was to do a Naya deck. And granted, white at first glance you think, what the hell does white have to do with Ponza? But then you have Arbor effects. You got Leonine Arbiter, and you got Avon Mind Sensor. Like the problem with Ghost Quarter is, okay, what do you do if they have basics? The problem with Bosaju is, what do you do if they have basic land types? They play duels or triumphs. And, you know, my idea on how to deal with that was just whack a few Avon Mind Sensors in the deck, you know, whack a few Arbiters, and then, you know, whenever they try and search the deck to replace it, they only search the top four cards or they have to pay. And if you're killing their lands, they probably can't pay, which means that you have a lot more efficient land destruction. But that still doesn't really get around the issue of free spells. You're in red and green by mandate, my, uh, in order to run red and six, right? So you can just yes. jam in Fury. Uh, because, like, you, it's pretty hard to keep an opponent off one mana, and that means they're probably also on two mana. Uh, and a lot of decks can do a lot of damage to two mana, even if it's just, like, resolving Ledger Shredder or something. Yeah, you only need two mana for a Merc Tide. Exactly. Merc Tide probably just kind of screws you up really bad, uh, unless you have super answers for it. Uh, well, but that's you can why jam in a play set of Furies. Yeah probably a play set of endurance ones since you're going to be running uh, a bunch of green spells anyways fair enough 
because you're running Life from the Loam and Ren and Six, you actually want lands in your graveyard. So you can pick which one that you uh, return to your hand. So yes. why not run a $1 rare that puts all the lands into your graveyard and lets you draw spells instead? What is this card? Countryside Crusher. It's a three mana, three, three. That at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into the graveyard and repeat this process. But the ability, whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one, plus one counter on Countryside Crusher. This is just really obnoxious. I don't think so, it's good, but it's hilarious. Well, the thing is, think about it. It's a three drop win condition for this deck. Uh, you don't even need Seismic Assault, per se. Uh, because you get it on turn three, you're running six on turn two. Uh, you come around to your turn. The deck is running like 25 lands or something stupid like that. Sorry, it's running 38 lands. You're probably going to get a counter uh, onto them, possibly two, and then you're going to draw a spell you can actually work with. And you recur the lands from your graveyard to your hand, probably recurring like Ghost Quarter. You play the Ghost Quarter that you just discarded, and then you Ghost Quarter them. It goes back to the graveyard. On turn four, you'll easily be hitting for like six. This Countryside Crusher can literally just eat a Murktide. Yeah, that is a pretty powerful engine right there. You know, I see why this deck you pulled up doesn't run Ren and Six, because I, if you get the Countryside Crusher going, it doesn't stop going. Though, on the other hand, I think, why not just jam Ren and Six? Uh, so that is one concern of a Countryside Crusher. You could mill yourself pretty hard. So that, that is a concern. But like in modern, like you want to be winning, like the game's over on turn five. So even if you mill 15 times, okay, you're not, you're not going to deck yourself from 15 extra uh, mills. Yeah, and they're playing against mill, in which case, I mean, to the madman riding mill in 2022, you deserve that victory. True. I mean, you can always just board it out game two. Yeah. Or actually, no, against, against uh, mill decks, you don't board anything out. You board your entire sideboard in. Yes. The one thing I was mildly concerned about with the strategy is that it makes surgical extraction incredibly punishing. Because normally, if you want to kill a lands deck, one of the best ways to do it is surgical extraction on the loam. Because at that point, you just ripped out their entire engine. Because legacy decks cannot play Crusher. It's just way too slow. And I'm thinking, at this point, all your land guards in the graveyard, you have no loam, and you don't have any other meaningful way to recur them. So, yeah, I think even Graveyard Hate that isn't surgical would probably just neuter this idea pretty hard. Um, well, lots of decks get neutered pretty hard to uh, timely Graveyard Hate. That is true. It, like, there is the option of going the route of Living End, uh, which is to, instead of, instead of jamming in white for the Cheeky Lee and an Arbiter, you go in blue for Force Negation. Hmm. Because, yeah. you know, why worry about Graveyard Hate uh, if they're not able to, if, if you just counter their Graveyard Hate for free? One thing, I actually think that would be a pretty pretty sneaky little thing to put in a deck like this, Thorn of Amethyst. Because if you can stick this, you're not going to worry about any of these free cost spells. Human Artifact, non-creature spells cost one more to cast. And I'm saying, maybe run this instead of putting in a white package because... One, it's an artifact, it's colorless, so you aren't putting in an extra color mana for it. And second, it dodges creature removal. I mean, it doesn't dodge, you know, artifact removal, but also who the hell plays Thorn of Amethyst in modern? Nobody would expect that. Yeah, I think I, if I played Thorn of Amethyst, I'm pretty sure every single player I sat across would say, hold on, what? And have to pick up the card and read it. Um... You know, so the problem is that doesn't change the fact that this deck would just fold to a scam deck. You know, scam? like, turn, turn one, evoke grief, ephemerate grief. Oh, yeah, the... You know, it doesn't even have to be turn one. They just get the cards in hand, play a land, you can't, and you can't remove the land at instant speed, uh, evoke a, a creature and then ephemerate the creature, or uh, Malakir Uprising the creature, or, sorry, Malakir Rebirth the creature. Um... The deck yeah, probably guess the reanimator would have a field day with this deck. All right, so here's another. I think on that topic, then, yeah, you'd probably have to play blue, just do what Living End does, and forcibly put in the forest negations just to have a fighting chance. So this list that we're looking at, the assault loan list, does run Treasure Hunt, which means it is in blue. Uh, so there would be blue spells to get. 
Ah, uh, Treasure Hunt, that brings me back. Because I think my first modern deck was Zombie Hunt. Which, for reference, is not a good deck. And it doesn't win often, but when it does, it puts like eight zombies onto the battlefield turn three. The way it works is that Treasure Hunt reveals cards from the top of your library until you get an on-land, and you put all those cards that you have. Zombie Infestation allows you to discard two cards and put a 2-2 zombie on the battlefield. So Treasure Hunt, draw 30 cards, make 15 zombies, hope that takes you to game two. So what, you just run a deck that has like two lands in it or something? No, it, Treasure Hunt is until you get a non-land card. So oh, oh, you run a deck that can be literally four Treasure Hunt, four Zombie Infestation, and 56 lands. Yeah, I can see how that'd be fun. I, I appreciate the yeah. fact that uh, only needs eight spells. Yeah, and it, it's one of those decks that if you just have a Snapcast Mage lying around, as I did, because I you know, started playing MTG, and I was like 13, and traded a Snapcast Mage off a guy for you know, something far less than a Snapcast Mage. So I just put this raggedy-ass Playground Snapcast Mage into the deck, because then if the, you know, the Treasure Hunt gets countered, you can flash it back. And it's also another beater. So I think if you're actually playing land seriously, if you have blue, I think, yeah, you could do a treasure hunt in there. But my question is also then, why not just play something like Mulch? Because that's, you know, a reveal top four, you get all the land cards, the rest in the graveyard. Well, I mean, if you're in blue anyways, and you need blue for free casting uh, Pact Negation, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. What I see in Legacy is 8 Mulch is a lands.deck variant that runs, well, typically runs for Winding Way and for Mulch, which effectively do let you churn through the deck. Of course, Legacy Lands does not run blue. It doesn't use forces because the package is just so tight and consistent that it can reliably recover because, you know, it has Loam, it has Mana Bond, it has Exploration. It can actually just play its whole entire hand, turn one, and say, beat a Dark Depth, turn two. Okay, so what is the Dark Depths interaction? All right, so for reference, the Dark Depths interaction, Dark Depths is this ridiculous cold snap card. Land, snow land even, and it is with 10 ice counters. Once it has zero ice counters, you get a 20-20 flying indestructible life. The trick is to get the counters off it quickly. The way lands.deck does this is by running Thespian Stage, which for two and a tap can copy any land. That's typically some variants, typically called Turbo Deaths, also run a Vampire Hex Mage, but those aren't really lands as just combo decks because lands can win even without the Deaths because it also has Field of the Dead and Urza Saga, which means that even if you handle the Deaths, which is perfectly possible to do if you just have a source to plowshares, you still have to deal with the inevitable zombie horde and the construct. And because it has loam, you kill the Field of the Dead, you kill the Urza Saga, you kill the Depths, it just comes back next turn. Okay, so this Legacy deck I'm looking at runs or Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes, from uh, Baldur's Gate, which has an absolutely hilarious minus two with Dark Depths. Sacrifice uh, Merit Lodge and just dome them for 20. Seems good. That it does. And I mean, personally, I would just run Fling instead of this. But on the other hand, Minsk and Boo actually have interaction because, you know, you get the 1-1 one, one Boo hamster every turn and you can pump it into a 4-4 four, four beater or you can just fling it for one and draw a card. So there are upsides to Minsk and Boo, I guess. Well, I mean, if you're in a super heavy board stall, that is a one spell eventually win the game. And there aren't that yeah, many it's, one It's spell. like a punishing fire. And oh yeah, you can target creatures with Minsk and Boo. This is a very small Urza Saga package this list has, because it's running four Urza Sagas, but the only targets in the deck are Expedition Map, Pithing Needle, and Shadow Sphere. I mean, that's really all you need. Well, like, because so there's no point in recurring an Urza Saga. Ever. No, the point in recurring the Urza Saga is to make more constructs. True. Yeah. It's like, some decks can run Urza Saga, and the tutor is just graveyards. You run Urza Saga so you can have creatures that come from lands. Dude, Urza Saga is such an whole over-designed thing card. Like, it, this is a bullshit enchantment land. It's like Questing Beast. It gains more text every time you read it. And unlike Questing Beast, it's also really fucking good. 
there's like four different decks that it itself builds. Yeah. By the way, is Affinity still played in Legacy, or has it been completely stomped out by Urza Saga and Hammer Time? Hammer Time is not a Legacy game. Really? Hammer Time, no. Because the problem is, you have twice as many Force Walls, and then you can just have absolutely evil shit like Meltdown. You can play Meltdown in Legacy. Get a lot of this. Red Sorcery, X and a red. Destroy every artifact with mana value X or less. Pretty good. You can just literally legit wipe hammer time off the map. Bam. Does that mean that Affinity is not viable on Legacy, is what you're saying? Uh, yes and no. Standard Affinity, no. I mean, no, nobody's like playing the actual Affinity creatures in Legacy, except for one Thought Monitor. You can play a blue artifact list called generally eight cast that is very good in Legacy. And the way that stuff wins is. It's basically just a mid-range deck. It plays Emery, it plays Psy, it plays Thought Monitors, it plays Kappa Cannoneers, and just every cheap artifact, Urza Saga, and other fun things like Artifact Lands, Odawara, and even Force of Will. How it wins is you play out seven zero-man artifacts over two turns, and then you just constantly grind value with Emery, which lets you cast your artifact from the graveyard. You play Psy, which gives you a free 1-1 one, one fly every time you cast an artifact. Thought Monitor and Thought Cast, you can play for one if you have enough artifacts. Draw two cards. Force the world to protect the stuff. And then it's also a Chalice deck. So you can just set Chalice on one and not worry about stuff. So yes, it is an affinity mechanic deck, but it's not white affinity, it's blue affinity. Interesting. All right, so we should go back to the original subject, and that is bringing lands to modern. And I have a question for yes. you after all this discussion. What deck that is currently a top-tier deck would even this perfect theoretical deck list actually be good against? Well, that's the question. Maybe Eldrazi? Harden Skiles? Jund? I mean, the B-tier decks that just get their shit pushed in by uh, four-color Omnath? Like, it's probably good against four-color Omnath. Yeah, Tron, because if you destroy Tron lands, what, what, what the hell is Tron going to do? My experience, top deck, they're the exact land that you just destroyed and laugh at you. Yes, but if we have like normal luck and not YouTuber luck. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, it would, it would give Tron a bad time. But giving Tron a bad time just feels I like, think... why isn't Jund running Ghost Quarter? Because like that, that's half the deck. Like they're already running Ren and Six, so why aren't they jamming Ghost Quarter? just shutting off four color omnath as well as uh tron yeah yeah i think this ponza variant could do pretty well against four color control because you could probably put in enough kind of magic to actually turn off ephemerates the mana base fragile and your game plan i think just lines up well against it because your creatures are going to be big enough to actually fight omnath and yorion toe to toe i think it could also be pretty decently against blue white control which again is kind of a slower, clunkier deck that if you could just top them down and stop them getting to like the big Teferi, you could probably just win. But I mean, against combo, that's I think where this deck could struggle because the issue is, I think if you can keep them off, you know, the critical mana point, like you keep crashing footballs, you keep living in off three mana and that is doable. Yeah, that, that's I think pretty viable. But if they get there or you, <laughs> the poor ass you have to play against Amulet Titan. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you're going to do much. Maybe, yeah, and, and of, obviously the issue with aggro decks is they can just go under this, like Death Shadow, Red Deck wins, Rakdos aggro, Merfolk, all of that is just going to go straight under this because they don't care if they're on one mana or three life. Yeah, if they just stick, like just sticking a Ledger Shredder, if you don't like immediately evoke a Fury to deal with that, and of course evoking Fury is eating up the few non-land spells that you actually have in your hand, given that uh, 38 lands, like it, Ledger Shredder will just beat the shit out of this deck. Yeah. Yeah, that one thing I would think is probably not do 38 lands, but go close to 30, 32, and then side in more answers. I almost want to... I'm not sure what kind of removal you'd need here. Because, now this is actually why I'd say maybe we do put white in this, because Path to Exile, 
one mana, kill anything, but your opponent gets a land. If your entire game plan revolves around shredding every land they play, including basics, I think Path could become a pretty viable answer to things like Shredder. You know, that's a fair point, especially if you do have White End in an Arbiter that, um, of course, just shuts off fetch lands, and, like, every viable deck is running, like, 10 fetch lands. Yeah. Um, they would have to remove the Arbiter in order to function. Yes. And that's why, I'd... oh, shit. I was hoping that, you know, Aven Mind Sensor had, like, free power, but it doesn't. So, yeah, Aven Mind Sensor can't actually kill Laser Shredder, which, on the one hand, I don't want it to, but on the other hand, I'm very disappointed that it's 2 1. So, something to consider, though, is I think Crashing Foe Falls does just kind of win. Like, not in, not in a glorious way at all, but they'll just eventually suspend a Foe Falls and then four turns later have two Rhinos. And,. If you're not running the countryside crusher, like they'll just build up an army of rhinos to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the issue because Fury will only kill one rhino and the crusher might just trade with it, in which case, okay, we can just have this conversation again in five turns. Yeah. <laughs> Another guy though, who I think just done going a mana denial thing, and yeah, I know it's from Modern Horizons 2. <laughs> Rashad and Doc Hat. One blue, one two merfolk, island walk. And for one and a tap, you can tap target land. And if we're already going to make this essentially into a four color deck, I think it's colorless ability and it's essentially just Rashad and Port on a dude, which lets you attack mana denial from another angle. Oh, uh, send me the link. Rashad and Doc Hand. Oh, yeah, I was playing against this the other day. I played against a very non functional merfolk deck. With my uh, my artifact burn deck, and it was like I was actually sacrificing experimental synthesizers to make two two samurais that I was trading with his merfolks. And That's the dude not a good place to be. Visibly was dying inside. Yeah, yeah, I'm a legacy player, so I'm not too you know keyed into how modern merfolk actually is supposed to win things without days. I, I don't think he had the right list. Yeah, because my question to random merfolk player. Why the fuck are you not running spreading seas? The one in a blue enchantment. Target land is an island. Uh, so what he was what he was running was the Merfolk creature that if you pick it, turn it basically is spreading seas. Yeah, that guy. I mean that's fair enough, but why not just run more of those? Because spreading seas also, you know, draws cards. Uh, and also uh gives blue devotion turn on Thassa. Spreading seas does that. Which too. I don't think he had in his deck. And the spreading seas is a ridiculously good card for Mer Merfolk. It's arguably, like, why the deck functions and stands a chance. Yes. Yeah, because that's what Merfolk does. It's just, you know, turn things into islands and play really good lords. You don't need to do more with Merfolk to win. Like, yeah, I mean, Tide Shaper, that's good, but I wouldn't say rely on it because the problem is that it's a creature, and more decks run creatures than, you know, run enchantments, so more decks run creature removal. But, yeah, now we're getting off course. James, closing thoughts on Modern Lands. Am I going to see you at this next FNM playing this deck? Uh, well, if you were able to magically give me a playset of Renin 6, I would play this. Just to see if it works. Uh, but the problem is, a playset of Renin 6 is, what, $300 right now? Yep. That's like 10 bottles of whiskey. A gun player, I am a boomer gun player. So yep. I don't actually own any Renin 6. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the issue. This fucking game costs money. I mean, I'll play this online. I'll test it out, you know. And yeah, no, I, I'd be down to test this online. We can find out whether or not our speculation is right. Like, I do genuinely think uh, jamming in Countryside Crusher into this makes it a viable deck. I, yeah. I think people have just like, overlooked that card because it looks stupid because it's like a three mana dies to a bolt. But yeah, it is really fucking stupid. You could just hang on to the Crusher until you have four uh, four mana, and then you just fetch or Ghost Quarter after you resolve it, immediately yep. make it a 4 for one. You could do that. And I mean, you know, as they say, there's a difference between stupid and jank until jank starts winning. <laughs> and on that note, this has been the Unreal Salt Mine. Tune in next week for more of this. And, like, if you have suggestions about what we should be angry about, tell us. We'll be angry that you suggested them. Cheers. Cheers.
I may have gone too far in a few places.